Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming to KSP episode 14 of Exploration. This is Kerbal Space Program, obviously, and this will be another interplanetary mission unmanned, of course, at this point. Uh, a transfer window for Pole arrived, so I sent the Pole rover. However, this is not the video for the Pole unmanned rover. That rover will find a flat colonization site. No, about halfway on the pole rover's uh, transit time, there came a Dres transfer window from Kerbin. So this is the Dres transfer window because I was able to complete the entire mission before the pole rover even encountered Jewel. This Dres mission is a launch of the Ard One I, and if you remember, the Ard One was Asteroid Redirect Device One. It was a small ion probe meant to capture asteroids and move them. And the original one caught a Class C asteroid in a captured Kerbin orbit due to a moon flyby. This one is headed to Dress and capture a Dressteroid, which is just a nickname for the asteroids that orbit around Dress. They orbit in a equatorial plane and fairly circular, so they're not actually that hard to reach, especially with such low gravity and orbital velocity around Dress. The initial ARD-1 was built with an SSTO launcher and uh, just used a single xenon tank with two engines and a single panel. The modified uh, ARD-1I and I for interplanetary uses uh, the SSTO launcher base, but it's not it's no longer a single stage orbit because it has a uh, efficient second stage which uses a poodle engine and then a final ion stage which I tacked on an extra tank of fuel. Now uh, one thing I missed was I didn't add enough power. I forgot that solar panel gains are far less out of, out in the outer planets new dress and that means that I was only able to run the engines very slowly and with extra mass it took forever to perform the burns. But thankfully I didn't make you watch that because it took half an hour to do the dress capture burn. Kind of like the Dawn Probit series. So this mission, although we... Because the dress droids are actually in an equatorial plane orbit, I don't actually need to redirect them. In fact, I could just send an R2 miner straight there to start building refueling stations and I wouldn't even need this one. However, unlike the Kerbin asteroids, the um, dress asteroids do not spawn until you have a vehicle there, and I wanted to be able to see what my actual target was. So the Ard 1i is more of an exploration type thing to get there and see the asteroids. Assuming it doesn't explode in the future, we will not need another one of these ever launched outside of Kerbin's, uh, near Kerbin asteroids. Um, Interestingly, the ARD-1 and ARD-2 assembly, which was attached to a Class C asteroid, was actually ejected from the Kerbin system. And the reason that happened was that during the time warp, apparently it had a moon encounter, which uh, shot it out of the system, and it's now in a solar orbit. So, yeah, um, I guess that's not going to be a refueling station anymore. But I guess it doesn't didn't really need to be, so uh, that'll just stay out there. There were no Kerbals on board anyway. So... For the dress mission, I also wanted to do an observation of dress from up close, and so what I did was initially, even though I was in a near polar orbit, I dropped the lap lamps and parry to about 40,000 meters each so I could get some close up observations of dress before moving back out to the outer orbit to, to capture an asteroid. And uh, this is because from the distance where the asteroids are, dress is definitely visible, but it is rather small and you cannot see any surface details, so I did want to get a good look at dress before I went there. I was able to spot the canyon. And uh, despite my power difficulties, which I will fix on future missions, um, I did manage to get there. Now, the only asteroid that popped up was a Class E, which is extremely lucky for me, because this Class E asteroid... Uh, well, first of all, it's already in a great orbit, so I don't have to move it. And second, it is... It weighs about 1,900 tons with 1,600 tons of ore. This is larger than... This is larger than some of my Kuiper Belt missions in real solar system with the giant rockets. This asteroid weighs more than many of my giant rockets. If you want to... I don't believe I ever really included launches for real solar system things, but you can see the payload that I actually got into space in those videos. And it was very big. And uh, so it's a giant asteroid. It's going to provide so much fuel. I'll have enough fuel for a very long time, and I think those Class E's can actually get up to around 3,000 tons, although this one wasn't. Anyway, it dwarfed the uh, Ard-1i in size. Very, very, very big. And again, uh, Dress is visible. Um, it's not very visible. It's pretty small. Maybe smaller than a full moon on Earth would appear. 
but you might be able to catch it in the video. Um, but again, it's not very close at all, and towing that Class E asteroid is absolutely out of the question. There's no way I can move that thing, um, practically. Um, actually, matching planes with the asteroid was very simple because of dress low orbital velocity at the altitude where the dresteroids inhabit in the ring. There is actually um, only an orbital velocity about 30 to 40 meters per second. So even with this pathetically slow engine, although very efficient with a f uh, 4200 ISP, 42 second ISP, 4200 second ISP, I was still able to quickly change orbital velocities. I mean, you can just slow to zero and go wherever you want. It's it's really easy. So uh, this was the only asteroid spawn here. But more will spawn probably as I time warp because I need to complete the pole uh, pole two rover mission. That mission will be next. Uh, the pole two mission is as sent to the second pole transfer window. Its job is to locate a flat site on pole for the colony because it's impossible to do from orbit. So that will land. It's got kind of a sky crane type lander that looks kind of like the Curiosity one, except it doesn't actually lower it with a cable because I don't have CAS. And um, yeah, it's it's a better version of the Vision rover from Minmus. It's got more wheels, so more stability. It's got an SAS for emergency, so it can ride itself. It's a much better design, and it should be able to also give us more accuracy in the orbital scanners. Now, as for dress, um, I'll have to send an R2 out here eventually to start mining this this Class E. However, that uh, that might take a while, and it's going to require the biggest rocket I've built yet, because the R1 for low curve and orbit use was already the biggest rocket I've built yet. So it's a rather large payload of 26 tons. It's going to be hard to get it to dress. Plus, it will require extra solar energy, solar panels. However, I will be doing that eventually. But the transfer window is not for a long time, so I've got time. Thanks for watching episode 14. Hope you enjoyed seeing dress and the dress droids, the dress asteroid ring, with this giant thing. Uh, in and interestingly, I found out that you could do super sample screenshots, which means you could take a screenshot in KSP that has way higher screen resolution, uh, resolution than your screen. So I took a 7 something thousand by 4 something thousand screenshot. It's very cool. I'll, uh, I found that out on Reddit. I'll talk about that more later. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, comment if you have anything to comment about. That's always welcome. And I will see you next time with episode 15 and the Pole 2 rover. Thanks for watching.